All right. First and foremost, I want to start off by saying, Brakatha Yahawa, Brakatha Yahawa Shai, Brakatha Yahawa, Brakatha Yahawa Shai, Brakatha Yahawa, Brakatha Yahawa Shai, Call Hala Yahawa Ba Shem Yahawa Shai Ba Shem Raka Kwadash. Double honor to the apostles of GMS, Great Millstone, who rule well and who taught me the truth. And Shalawam to you, sincere Akiam, out there listening and learning and pushing this truth. And shalom to the few sincere Akwaf that are out there listening and learning as well. With that being said, I don't want what this to be edifying. As usual, I'm going to go into Raka Kwadash. And this, is, this isn't going to be long. It should be a quick one. Um, you know, I'm always watching. As, as, as you able-bodied men should also be doing watching as well as praying. And, um, you know, what are we watching? We, we're, first and foremost, we're watching the news, you know. And we're filtering everything through the scriptures, you know. Me personally, I like to watch the economy because we know we keep telling you over and over this house of cards is collapsing, okay? And it's all by design, ultimately, by the wicked elite. They're going to collapse this current economy, this current fiat fiscal system, and they're going to uh, bring all, all matter of hell chaos, you know, and usher in a new digital system, a new age, a new way of buying and selling, spearheaded by the Karagma. Okay, you know, we like they always say, this is a house of cards, it's collapsing, and um, you know, uh, they said the American um economy was like a big bubble, like like in 2008, it was a housing bubble, you know, this 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 economy is just one big bubble, it's a facade, it's being um, you know, backed up, it really this this thing is being kept this this. <laughs> Economy is being kept afloat by the by the elites, the wicked elites, through their witchcraft, their skullduggery, their lies, you know, you know, the quantitative ease and bailouts, all type, you know, they, this thing should have been popped, okay, but it, but it's, it's gonna pop, man, it's gonna pop, it's inevitable. Babylon the Great is through, this place is through, you know, but again, like I said, I'm always watching, especially, you know, we watch the brothers, we watch the brothers, the um. You know, we keep an eye on the, the 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 elect men. You know, see what's going on, what's on their spirit also. But I I like I love watching the economy, man. I love watching the housing things about the housing market. You know, real estate, whether it be um, residential or, or or commercial. I love watching about that because you can see it. The economy is like the the lifeline of of of, of a nation, man. You know, I, the, I keep tabs on the um, um, unemployment. Layoffs, stuff like that. I'm always watching, man. Always watching um, the car, the car market, used and new. You know, that's you can really gauge how you know what's really going on. All right. And uh, one of the one of the channels I watch is this guy here, Car Questions Answered. He sells. Um, he's a used car salesman. He sells cars from like two thousand to like five thousand dollars. He doesn't sell high end cars. He sells like you know affordable cars man and um but that's not what his channel is his channel is really about giving you a, a, a um an inside look a, a, a behind the curtains when he go he goes to a lot of auctions and so on so on and so forth and he, he you know he keep he, he's he's 100 he's, he, you know he's he's pretty accurate man you know on what's going on in the in the uh, car market you know and he's he's pretty much spot on you know and I, I was watching this video, which I, I've seen videos about this. I mean, this is an ongoing narrative. Car, you know, people aren't buying cars like that no more. You know, and and the economy is completely out of whack. You know, basically, when you watch this video, you, you're going to see that at CarMax, which is a prevalent, prominent um, used car lot, especially down south. I don't know about up north, but down south, they're all over. You know, and um, I've actually bought a, a car from them before. I bought like two cars from them before in the past, but um, they're showing you that the price of a used car with miles on it, you know, not brand new, brand new car. I mean, a used car, you know, fourteen thousand miles on it, ten thousand miles, twenty thousand miles, older, you know, two three year old car is is damn. It's not even damn near. It is. It's more expensive than a, a brand new car. Okay, so that something something ain't right, man. Something's out of whack. Something's afoot. You know. And that's a sign of the times, okay? Matter of fact, there was a comment that was left 
he, he was show, he was speaking on a, a, a Ford Maverick, right? But here's a comment. The guy says, uh, the Maverick was funny. I bought a 2022 Maverick XL for $23,400. Brand new from, from the dealer, right? I ordered it in June of 2021. I drove it from the dealership to home about four miles, waited for the title, and drove it to CarMax two weeks later. It had about 39 miles on it when I sold it to them for 32000 So if they bought that car, which he paid twenty, You see how things are out of whack? So, you know? But that's that's how this society's uh, built, man. Based upon usury and, you know, debt, you know? <laughs> that's the capitalistic mindset. Everybody trying to get over on the next man, you know? You know? So if, if he bought it for 23000 they they... They sold it for thirty-two. What? How much you think they sold it for? Matter of fact, one of the comments I saw, they were like, they probably sold it for like forty. You know, they say, and CarMax later sold it for forty-two thousand. You know, so hey man, <laughs> and we know a car is a is a is a um, soon as you it's a it's, it's constantly depreciating. A car doesn't hold its value. Soon as you drive it off the lot, it's depreciating. You know, so. Man, it, anyway, a slacky for ranting, you know, I was ranting a little bit, but it, hey, man, beautiful times that we're living in. If you're watching, you know, if you're watching, you know, um, which as we know, as a, as your Howard Bushman, Howard Shai's watchman, that's what we should be doing, watching everything, man, and filtering it through the scriptures, measuring the time diligently, okay, because our redemption truly is nigh. We're watching the collapse of uh, our enemy, you know. Esau's the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. This place is through, and this devil knows it. And he's about to come down with great wrath. But it's going to catch a lot of you off guard because you're not taking heed. You know? You're putting off the evil day, man. The Lord said, woe to you. This is Mark chapter 13. The main point is in 33. And I start at 30. It says, verily, I, verily means truly. I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Yeah, we know Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, his word is bond. His, he's faithful and true. And he said, one jot and one tittle shall not pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And there's only a handful of prophecies that are left to play out. You know? You know, and we're watching. We're, we're watching. Gage, and we're measuring. Ga uh, gauging everything according to the scriptures. But of that day and that hour, the exact time we don't know. Not even Yahweh Shai, as it's going to say. Yahweh Shai doesn't even know the exact time when he, he's, Yahweh is going to give him the green light to, to return and redeem us. But he, he gave us tokens, signs to measure, to gauge, you know, and, and, and the prophecies are screaming. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the son, but the father. Only Yahweh knows the exact moment. Okay, but we know our redemption is nigh. Each day that passes is a day closer to the kingdom. It's inevitable. And through great trip through much tribulation we shall enter into the kingdom. All hell is gonna break loose when our Lord returns. Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. He said he, he came to set fire on the earth, and what may he be, if it be already kindled? The love of many is gonna wax cold. You know, it's gonna be all manner of hell breaking loose. Daniel twelve and one, a time that never before. No work for Egypt gonna be plagues pestilences martial law sedition that's the times that we're that, that we're quickly approaching and we can see it it's evident and so it says take ye heed this is the main point take ye heed watch and pray that's what we do constantly daily watching and praying man you know for ye know not when that time when the time is okay that's the main point. Uh, I'll read a little bit more. So it says, uh, I'll, I'll read it down to the end. It says, it says For the Son of Man, Yahushua HaMashiach, is a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants. The, the, starting from our apostles on down. You know? Where he left certain men in charge to do what? To, to occupy. You know? And what the Lord gave us. This truth. Warn the people, bid them to the marriage, exhort one another. You know? You know, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the noble, lift up the standard, you know, lift up the banner upon the high mountain. We got work to do. We are the Lord's husbandry. We're working in this field, which is the world, flipping the Lord's talent, his money, because he's coming back and he's going to require it with usury. 
That's why again he says, Occupied till I come. For the Son of Man is a man taken a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants. And how was and Paul said that let everything be done decently in order. There's order to things, there's levels to things, man. And to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. That's what we're doing, we're watching. Watch ye therefore, because the enemy is about to come in as a flood. You know? <laughs> Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at evening or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest commonly he find you sleeping. And that's our worst nightmare, man. You know, you don't want your house shy to come and catch you <laughs> settled on your leaves, sleeping on the job, you know? <laughs> you know? You know? You want him, you want to, you want. You want the, the, him to come catch you in the field working, you know, with the plow in your hand, you know, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm going to close out here. That's one of my favorite chapters, you know, one of my favorite verses, you know, and that's all that was coming to mind as I'm watching, uh, you know, gauging the economy, you know. And um, I'm, I got the definition of economy off of Google. It says economy, the wealth and resources of a country or region, especially in terms of the in terms of of the production and consumption of goods and services and the economy is coming to a screeching halt people aren't selling houses people aren't buying houses they're not selling cars they're not um buying cars you know the the economy is coming to a screeching halt a stag a standstill it's stagnant uh inflation has been setting in which is leading to hyperinflation the cost of everything is going up Ends are meeting. People are starting to, to worry, panic. You know? You know? It's, it's looking real gr grim, gloomy out there. You know? You know? A lot of layoffs are happening. You know? Hard times are... are we, we Evil days. We're, we're in the beginning of the evil days. Okay? And the economy is, is the lifeline of a nation. So I, I googled off of... Uh, I mean, I, I googled this uh, importance of the economy, Right? So it says, I, I, was like, I wanted to know what is the, which I already know, but, you know, so, so you can get it, you know, straight from the horse's mouth. What's the importance of, of, the, of watching the economy, all right? What's the importance of economics? So it says, economics play, play a role in all of the following major life experiences. Again, the economy is the major uh, lifeline, a major artery of a nation, okay? So it says, how the government plans policies and that's what we uh, they're gonna their policies they're gonna be dictated <laughs> order out of chaos the hegelian dialogue that's why they're collapsing this economy so that they can usher out these unrighteous decrees these uh draconian legislations okay when all hell breaks loose they'll be justified in uh rolling out that karagma you know you know you know whether they have complete control and monitor everything you know it's all by design. How the government plans policies, the state of housing market and real estate investment opportunities, the abilities to make wise financial decisions. And, 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 and as far as the elect, we're watching, engaging, and we're seeing we're at the end of this world, this age, this eon, this empire, this particular rulership. You know, so it would behoove you to, hey, <laughs> um, uh, um, if make a financial investment in your how about you, how shy? You see, <laughs> invest all your you know all your time and effort in your how about you, how shy, and the one true living power, you know, you know, because he's gonna be get the victory in the end. Everything else in this world is vanity and vexation of spirit. Everything else is gonna come to naught. Everything else is gonna fail you, you know. You know, our bet is on you. How about Shimmy How Shy, man? You know, and that's why we're giving diligence to make our calling and election sure. Because this economy is through. America's through. Babylon the Great is through. It's obvious. It's evident. The writing's on the wall, man. This place is done. If you're watching, you know. So I'm gonna close out here. I don't want to write this out. This made sense. I didn't want to make it too too long. You know, I was just watching and I, I had to do a little lesson. You know. This was in my mind, but I really wanted to, um, I'm going to go into blue letter and get some different translations, right? Habakkuk 2 and 6, but I'll start at 3, right? Habakkuk uh, 2 and 3. 
For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, which we know. The prophecies are screaming. Though it tarry, wait for it. That's that's the patience and the faith of the saints. This thing is, is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know, it's a thing of, of enduring. Because again, no man knoweth the exact hour except the Father. But we know we're close. We're, we're close through measuring everything, through watching, you know? Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul, Esau, Edom, the wicked, per Malachi 1 and 4. Behold, his soul, and oh, read Obadiah, the pride of his heart. He's the proud man. His look was more stout than the rest of his fellows. Esau, Edom. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. He can't get right. He, Yahweh, he was made to be the wicked. Okay? He's Yahweh Bashim and Hawashai's whipping stick on the left-hand side. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just, the righteous, the elect, for, well, the, the just Yasharala first and foremost, but really the remnant, the elect, but the just shall live by faith. And that's how we walk. We walk by faith, not by sight. We're prisoners of hope, you know? Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man. Esau, Edom, his philosophies, his ideologies, right? Neither keepeth at home who enlargeth his desire as hell and as, as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against them and say, Woe, mean, woe means destruction, to him that increaseth that which is not his, how long, and to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. Okay? That, the whole chapter is good, but that, that's the main point because, you know, as far as the uh, economy, going back to CarMax and when you checking out real estate and, and everything, we know this place is built upon usury. Okay? That's the backbone of the economy, usury, interest, debt. That's what the, uh, thick clay is. I bought you. Heavy pledges, debts. Okay? Okay? And, and that's going to be his downfall. And you're, you're seeing it. You're seeing it. Okay? So I'm going to close out here. Habakkuk 2 and 6 again. But I want to get it in the, um, I really, in the NKJV, but really the NLT is what I wanted. Will not all these take up a proverb against the NKJV? Uh, will not all Habakkuk 2 and 6 will not all these take up a proverb against him and a taunting riddle against him and say woe to him who increases what is not his because everything Esau Edom has whether he's a, a he's a, um, a Englishman a so called Brit you know he's from the United Kingdom you know or he's a, a, a Frenchman or, or a Spaniard or an American you know or, or Portuguese they're all Edomites man you know, and and everything they've gotten, they've raped, robbed, and pillaged. They've stolen it, okay? Wherever he's at, all the lands he's acquired, all the wealth he's acquired, he's gotten it by by deceit, rape, robbage, and pillaging, okay? You know, wickedly. Riches got by deceit. Will not all these take up a proverb against him and a taunting riddle against him and say, Salakia, woe to him that increaseth, what is not his, how long? And to him who loads himself with many pledges that I bought you, that debt, that usury, okay? That, you're using debt-bearing notes, <laughs> okay? Funny money. And it's, come, it's, 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 it's crashing. And it's all by design so he can usher in that digital system, that karagma, okay? And, and not long. Job told you that the joy of the hypocrite is but for a moment. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai set the bounds which he can't pass, and he knows it. He has a short time, and he's going to come down with great wrath. Revelation 12 and 12. But this domain, um, I wanted to get it in the NLT. Right? Habakkuk 2 and 6. I'm going to close out here. But soon their captives will taunt them. All right? And, and really, it's the men of the Lord. We're mocking you. You know? <laughs> We're shaking the hand that they may go into the gates of the noble. We're telling you off. Lifting up this banner upon the high mountain. When you shake the hand at somebody, you're telling them off. Shameful spewing is on your glory. Your time is up. Tick tock, you goddamn devils. You're through. As it says in uh, Lamentations, Rejoice, O daughter of Edom, that dwelleth in the land of Uz. The cup shall pass through to you. You about to drink of the same cup we had to drink. You goddamn devils, and you're going to drink double of it. Okay? That's the good news. That's the gospel. Our bid is up. 
And the Yahweh Bashim Shai is about to recompense all our enemies. Starting with Esau Edom. And two thirds of Yasharala. You wicked ass niggas that refuse to repent. But soon their captives will taunt them. They will mock them saying. What sorrow awaits you thieves? Because that's what who Yahweh Shai is coming for. Chiefly you thieves. Per Psalms. He's coming for you, your nobles. He's going to bind you with the chains of fetters and iron. Okay? <laughs> All right? You wicked elite. You Rothschilds. You Gettys. You DuPonts. You Vanderbilts. You Oppenheimers. You so-called 1%. The, the uh, oligarchs. Okay? That control this world. That's the first ones that's going into slavery. Okay? And and because you've built this place upon deceit, wickedness. I bought you debt, heavy debts. Usury. You know, what sorrow awaits you? Now you will get what you deserve. You d you've become rich by extortion, but how much longer can this go on? Not much longer. Okay, the cries of the righteous have entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the Lord of Hosts, the Lord of Armies. Our cries were signing and crying for all the abomination done therein, and our cries are not falling on deaf ears. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai hears us and he's about to avenge us speedily. Okay? And we can't wait, baby. You know, we can't wait. You know? So and, 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 and all and that and that's how this this kingdom is built upon, especially here in Babylon the Great. Extortion, usury, debt, interest. You know? The, the, you go to go buy a car, you go buy a house. That's how they get that's how they get you. Through that usury, that you know. That debt, you know? But it's hey, it's coming to an end. The house of cards is collapsing. They ain't moving. By, this place is coming to a screeching halt. Ain't nothing moving. Ain't nothing coming in. Ain't nothing going out. Okay? Hey, so, hey, like I always say, beautiful times that we're living in for the elect. Horrific times for the rest of you. So keep fighting, man. Keep pushing. Keep watching as well as praying. All right? Putting on as the elect, fighting the good fight. We're close. Shalom. Wa abad babal kwam nisharala.